Hi. In this video, I'll explain about the concept of magnification in a compound microscope. We have two lenses, the objective lens and the eyepiece lens on the right. Uh, the objective lens is shown in yellow color and the eyepiece lens in green color. All colors shown in this page are only for representative purpose and make it easier to see things. The object here is a red arrow and it forms an intermediate image. We call it image 1, which is shown as an inverted blue arrow. Actually, it will be the same color as the object. And this inverted arrow becomes the object for the eyepiece lens. And therefore, it forms the final image, which is shown as the enlarged inverted arrow. All the objects and images will be, of course, of the same color. Now, there are some additional dimensions here, which we should note. The distance L is called the tube length. It is actually the effective tube length, the distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece lens. The other dimensions are u naught, which is the object distance from the lens. And that's normally greater than f naught. And f naught is the focal length of the objective lens. And here, the objective lens has a very small focal length, which means it's very powerful. The eyepiece lens has a long focal length, fe, which means it's not all that powerful. So these relative dimensions here are extremely important. Get the right ray diagram. With that, we move to this slide where we talk about magnification. The whole advantage of a compound microscope is to get a huge magnification. And that's obtained by simply multiplying the angular magnification of the objective lens, M0, into the angular magnification of the eyepiece lens, ME. So if M0 is 20 and ME is 3, then the total magnification is 60. Now the M0 will depend heavily on the tube length L. The longer the tube length, better the M0. This is how it happens. M0 is actually equal to minus of the V0 by F0, where V0 is the distance where the image is formed. And F0, as I told you, is the focal length of the objective lens. Now for a long tube, the V0 is so big and F0 so small that we can approximate it as minus L by F0. And that's why the magnification of the objective lens becomes proportional to the tube length of the microscope. Of course, we pay more money for a longer microscope. So if L is 50 centimeters and F0 is 5, we get an MO of just 10. If L is 160 centimeters, which is a normal one, and F0 is 5, we get MO is equal to 32. Then we multiply it by the ME. ME itself is either D by FE or 1 plus D by FE, depending on where the image is formed. Now we have a couple of more dimensions on the same sketch. And we focus on three things here, the u naught, the object distance from the lens, the v naught, the distance where the intermediate image, image 1 has been formed, and the dimension ue. Ue is the distance of the image 1 from the eyepiece lens. So with that, we look at some other definitions of angular magnification. So one definition is mentioned here, that's theta 1 by theta naught, where theta 1 is what is actually found in reality. So if the image 1 is formed at the focal length of the eyepiece and the final image is formed in infinity, it subtends at angle theta 1. And the flow is that we move the object on the principal axis in such a way that we get the image exactly at the focal length of the eyepiece. It's an adjustment process. And then the final image will definitely form at infinity because the eyepiece is a convex lens. So the angle subtended by the intermediate image, which is a blue colored arrow, and the final image formed at infinity, both the angles are same. That's theta 1. So if it's in radians, then tan theta 1 is equal to theta 1 equal to h1 by Fe. Then if the object is placed at the near point of the eye, then tan theta naught equal to theta naught equal to h by d and dividing m equal to theta 1 by theta naught we get finally the equation for the angular magnification. Now the image formed at infinity is not always well focused so the practice is to get the image at the near point of the eye which is the closest distance where a normal human being can focus on the image sharply and clearly. So in order to keep the image at the near point you can see the flow chart on the top. You move the object 
till you get the image 1 closer to the eyepiece lens in such a way that the final image is formed at the near point and that's capital D. The capital D is normally 25 centimeters for a human being having normal eyesight. So angular magnification equation changes a little bit and it becomes minus V0 by U0 into 1 plus D by Fe. The 1 plus thing that you see here gives a boost to the magnification. I hope this was useful. Thanks and have a great day.